Impeachment? More like implumment. <laughs> Fruit. Okay. The impeachment of Donald Trump is ongoing. It's complicated, it's hard to wrap your arms around, and it's really, really, really hard to know where to look and why. Which is where I come in. So, let's do it. Here we go. Let's start here. With five impeachment story headlines from the week that was in just 30 seconds. Number one. Vice President Mike Pence defends Donald Trump over the Ukraine call, contradicting his own 2016 comments on foreign interference. Number two, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo vows to follow the law on the impeachment inquiry, even after a diplomat was blocked from testifying. Number three, a new poll finds more than half of people support impeaching Trump and removing him from office. Number four, 228 House Democrats have said they support an impeachment inquiry. And number five, House Democrats have subpoenaed, indicted Giuliani Associates. <laughs> This week, my guest is Sam Vinograd. Sam is a CNN national security analyst. She's also a former senior advisor to the national security advisor at the White House during the Obama years. And before that, she worked at the Treasury Department under the Bush administration where she was deployed to Iraq. She has a much more impressive resume than me. Hi, Sam. Hello. Okay, I wanna talk specifically about this Ukraine transcript or rough memo, whatever you wanna call it, that is at the center of this controversy. The White House released it. You've been on lots of these calls. So let's start from here. How many people are on it? How often does it happen? Well, let's start with why the president decides to do one of these calls. Yes. I mean, normally what happens is the national security advisor, who's not Rudy Giuliani, by the way, but the national security advisor says, Mr. President, this is the reason why you should talk to name your foreign leader. Mm -hmm. In the case of Ukraine, you could imagine that Secretary of State Pompeo, who has a lot of influence, could have said, Mr. President, you should talk to Ukraine because they're at a critical moment in their discussions with Russia over peace, for example. So there's a recommendation from the policy team about making a foreign leader a call. Then all the machinery starts to work. NSD starts putting together talking points. And then once the call is actually ready to go, the president can actually do the call from anywhere. I was on Air Force One when President Obama spoke with European leaders. He can do a call from the Oval Office. Or like in the Ukraine call case, he can do it from the residence. Are there always other people on the line? Yes. Are the leaders aware of it? And how many people roughly are we talking? There is always someone else on the line. So that person always is someone in the Situation Room. The Situation Room <laughs> is a room. I spent a lot of time in there. Not Wolf Blitzer's Situation Not Room. Not the Wolf important, Blitzer's Situation important Room. Important clarification, the actual The actual situa Situation Room has these rooms where you have these like super classified meetings, but then there's 20 or so staff, maybe a little bit more, that are typically intel analysts that do things like connect presidential calls and monitor them and hmm. get and get various other communications incoming to the White House. So the sit room, as we call it, connects the president's call. So that person that just connects a call is definitely on the phone. The director of the situation room is normally on the phone. And then there are two to three people, again, situation room staff, their only job is to take notes during the call. They're doing it in real hmm. time. If the president sneezes, I've seen transcripts where they write, sneeze. In addition to sit room staff, Chris, there's normally what we call the policy people on. So the National Security Council has something called a senior director for Europe. In the case of Ukraine, that person who's the lead expert on European affairs would be on the call mm -hmm. along with the subject matter expert for Ukraine. So the call happens. Is it protocol that these people who are taking notes in real time that a document of some form is produced, number one, and then number two, how broadly typically would it be circulated? Okay, so I'll take your first question first. Is there some kind of document after a call? Yes, it is literally the law that there is some kind of document after a presidential call or a presidential engagement of any kind, the Presidential Records Act, right. the PRA, yep. which means that everything the president does is actually the property of the people. And I'm summarizing a bit, but the point is he has to document everything that takes place. So after a call like this, these notes that the sit room takes are shared with the other people on the call just to make any edits for accuracy, not to get rid of anything. Once that whole process happens, the document has to be filed for the presidential record. It should be filed on the system that's commensurate with its classification level. So if you just look at the transcript or readout that was released, it was that we call a secret no foreign Orcon level. So it should have been stored on this one server, which is at the top secret level. Instead, we found out these guys moved it to a different one. Under an executive order, which has a force of law, you can't classify something 
to cover up embarrassment or potential violation of mm. law. So even though the president, from my reading, engaged in a potentially illegal act, soliciting foreign campaign interference and establish a quid pro quo, you can't like classify it as the most classified document in the world because you don't want anyone to see it. Just that's, to protect it. That right. is literally abusing the executive order. How unusual is this call with Vladimir Zelensky and everything that surrounds it compared to what you knew of in your time in the White House? It's opposite day. The whole purpose of a call with a foreign leader is to advance national security. Everything about this call, what the president said on the call, the way that the readout was managed verbally and in written form, and the, where this uh, readout was stored are the opposite of what should happen to advance U.S. national security. Sam Vinaigrette, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. You bet. And that is the very interesting point. Check back every weekend for everything you need to know and then some about the impeachment battle.